Hi everyone. Hello, it's Rita from Miss Rita to the Rescue here for today's Cricut Chat. Um, and let's see, it's March 2nd. I just found out that today is National Craft Day. Um, I guess the whole month is um, National Craft Month. So, hooray, we get to do all our crafts and be proud of them. Not that we aren't the rest of the year, but um, I guess this is National Craft Month. I guess you can buy ha twice as many of your allotted craft supplies. Yeah, yeah, that's what it is. Um, <laughs> it make me feel um, no guilt. Not that I really feel guilt. I don't know. Do you feel guilt when you craft? Not me. I love it. It's like therapy. Um, so, oh, hey, Nancy. Nancy, um, people keep asking me about this, uh, this corgi that you gave me. They keep asking me. I'm a magnet. And I don't, I haven't looked. I've been so busy. I haven't had a look to uh, find it. Was this in design space? Let me know, okay? Um, because everybody loves it. And I want to, I want to show people how to make it. If that's, if it is in design space. Um, or if, if that's what you want to do. That's up to you. Anyway, how is everyone this morning? Um, it is so windy outside. I've been outside three times already trying to get my trash barrels to stand up and they don't want to. Um, and so I've just left them. <laughs> I'm sure that the, the, uh, the waste guys are not going to be too happy with me, but oh well. Um, you know, oh well, oh well. So, so that's that. I wonder if it's windy in your area, but you know, March is always that way. It's very blowy in March and I'm just happy to have that almost spring sun coming into, um, coming into my windows this morning. It's cold and windy, but it feels like it's going to be spring soon. It was, it was the cute lawsuit cute what was it called cute cute lawsuit pets i'll have to check that out thanks nancy yeah super windy all over the place trash is everywhere um in our because today is trash day in my neighborhood and so of course all the trash is getting everywhere anyway so let's get started um yeah all night all night right very windy very windy, kind of that creepy wind, right? Um, yeah, that's right. Thanks for reminding us, Midge. So um, I guess HSN is having a maker bundle, bundle, maker bundle all day for um, $309. I saw that. It was actually, I think, a good deal considering um, you get the maker plus a bunch of stuff for... 310 and I, I'm sure well I don't know do they charge shipping for that that's what I like about Cricut is that they don't charge shipping um and everything so there's that but but yeah check it out if you're if you're interested in getting a maker so today we're going to be working more on these cards um there are so many of them and uh we i want to show you them all um I'm, I'm working my way through them um i cut all day yesterday i cut all day yesterday and um i i came on and to show you uh earlier yes or later yesterday on what we're making so these are um these are still fancy fold cards but they are um four they just have the four flaps they don't have a whole lot of um a whole lot of uh cut folding like yesterday's cards right so they're just simply these they're they're simpler simpler um there are a few tricks though that you need to know about it and this one here this is a beautiful square card you know um and then i think the thing i like about these is that they're kind of like 
um, like box tops, you know, when you get a cardboard box and you would do the every other, what am I doing wrong here? Okay, this one here goes in here. All right, so here we go. So that is that. And then um, the thing that makes these a little more clever, I did it in a different color. And the thing that makes it a little more clever um, is these belly bands. So there's a belly band. Um, have you ever heard of a belly band? It's basically just a band um, that goes around the middle. That's why they're called belly bands that goes around the middle of these cards. They're really not necessary, but they are, um, they are, uh, cute. And I'm going to show you a little trick that I did because this one, these are, they're very short, um, for belly band. So I'm going to show you a different one. So, and then I used this little cutout from one of the flowers to put it there. And I thought maybe a sticker there would be cute or something. Um, so I wanted to show you how this one looks. So this one's all these flowers that I cut out in the spring, um, the spring colors, my favorite colors. And this opens up like this. Isn't that cute? And then you can write here or put a sentiment even in uh, in vinyl there, okay? So that is this one. And the way that these fold, um, it, so this is the trick that you have to be aware of when you're folding them is that the flowers have to show. Um, and so when you put them together, you have to kind of be cognizant of that. Oh man, I'm just, this is an uncomfortable position for me to be in, to hold and do. Okay, there we go. Um, so see how each panel has a pretty flower and there it's, it's that, it's that way. So that when you fold, you're folding onto the bottom of the flower. Now the, um, pets one, the dog and cat one, which, of course, is my favorite. I did wrong the first time, so I'm going to show you how to not do it wrong. I think what I really like about this one is that there's all these little um, paw prints uh, cut out, and they're covered. I don't know why that one is not. Oh, okay, here, hold on. Right, so they're all they're all covered. So so when they come out, they come out these colors. I love it. All right, but um, I did put this on wrong because see how the the dogs when you fold it this way, both dogs are facing up, but the cats, one is up and one is down. This is the correct way. I put the dogs on the wrong way. One should be down, the other one should be up. So that way, when you fold it you're folding on to the bottom of the animal and you get to see all of the animals. Yeah, these designs are all in design space like this. So see, I did this wrong. I'm going to show you how to do it right. Um, but it's kind of cute this way anyway. And here's the belly band that goes on here. Uh, let's see. Here's the belly band. I have a hard time holding my arms up like this and doing stuff. Anyway, so yeah, these are all in design space. Now, they they aren't labeled anything in particular, so I'm calling them box fold cards um because they have the four uh they have the four different uh cover things and they close like a box but also yesterday when I was um when I was fiddling around I I got around to making the um a cat and a dog right um I got around to making this one which was just uh kind of like the pinwheel cards we made yesterday but as I thought about it I thought this is really thick because look it has uh, first of all, the, the base is cardstock, and then these pieces are all uh, cardstock. And then you turn it over, and there's cardstock here on the back and doubled over here. So when you folded it, or when you fold it, um, it is a very difficult to fold, at least for the first couple of times. So I went back to the drawing board, and I won't have it this morning because I didn't get it done chasing my... Uh, 
my trash bins. Um, but, but I decided to do this in that patterned vinyl from yesterday. And I'm going to show you that later on, um, because I think it will make it much thinner and also a little more colorful. Okay. So I'm going to show you where to find these cards. Um, I'm going to tell you how I resize them. And then we're going to put them together, okay? Um, let's see. So these also come from those crazy cute cards. We're going to get through all of them. I don't, <laughs> um, I'm pretty sure we're going to we're going to be able to say that we did the majority of them. And don't worry if you're concerned about Easter cards and um, even maybe a few St. Patrick's Day things, although we did St. Patrick's Day last week, um, I will be focusing on Easter crafts and cards soon. But I just think these are awesome cards for you to have for any occasion. Um, maybe you want to give your vet <laughs> this one here to thank them, or you just want to send a pretty um, floral card or even this tree of life one. So, um, so let us start from the beginning. I'm going to save this and I will give you this file after and I'll put it in the description of the video. Okay. So let's go to new. Um, and so we're going to start off by getting these images in design space, right? And how do we do that? We go over to images and this is the entire image, all of the images. So you could search in here or browse to your heart's content over 183,000 images, so many images. Um, and so it can get a little overwhelming. So the best thing that I like to do is I like to search in categories. Um, so what I do is I go to up here, category, all images. And this is, uh, this is the entire search engine laid out in categories. And one of the places that I like to go the most is here, image set. So image sets sort of corrals all those images, right? Just corrals all those images into groups. And um, they're called image sets. They used to be called cartridges, but they're called image sets now. And the ones that we're going to look for are called crazy. We're going to put in the word crazy and we come up with crazy cool cards. And then at the bottom, we come up with crazy cute cards. So these, these two, um, image sets we've been working on for a couple of days now. There's so many cards in here. In fact, I think there's like 60, yeah, 60 total cards. And I've been breaking them down so that we're putting like with like. Um, and so this is what we're going to do today. We're doing the box fold cards. Yesterday we did the pinwheels. Uh, we're going to be making Z fold cards next. And then we're going to do these interactive type cards um, at the end of the week. Okay, so here's the crazy cool cards. Let me show you where to find. Uh, I think there's just, two, oh no, there's three here. Um, so here is here is the dog one. And here is the tree one, and here is the flower one. So actually, all three of them are in crazy cool cards. So you just want to click on those and bring them into design space, okay? Now, um, they come in with envelopes, and they also come in uh, sized pretty okay, but I like to make them bigger because I like a big card. So what I'm going to do is isolate each one, and I'm going to ungroup. Um, and in this case, I'm not going to do the, the envelope, but you're welcome to do the envelope, obviously. It's a square card, and I normally would do the envelope for a square square card because I don't have any of those in my um, in my uh, collection. Okay, so this is where I got off track because you see how these pieces go together. So it's like this piece here and then this piece here, and that's what goes on the flaps. On the middle, it's also the two colors 
So like the orangey or yellowy color, and then this is sort of a um, outline around it. Really cute. It sits right in there. But the dogs are supposed to be um, facing, like this is the way that they're supposed to go. So the cat goes this way, and then this cat goes this way, like that. And, whoops. And then this one would be all turned around like this. So that way they, um, and it's cut that way, but I guess when I put it together, it just didn't make a whole lot of sense to me. And, um, or I didn't really consider that. So, um, this is how it would go. So to, um, to cut this out, this is what I would do. Um, actually, I'm going to, talk about the belly band in a second. So I would I would um scrunch everything together and and then I could um Oh goodness. Oh. Oh, mailman. <laughs> okay. So I'd scrunch everything together so that I could uh resize it. And so this is the belly band. So it's two pieces of um cardstock. So um, we're going to make this bigger. I was making them, or I am making them at about 10 and a half inches. Um, it uses a good size piece. It all, all of this uses 12 by 12 card stock. Um, and uh, well, not all of it. I mean, but when you cut it out, it's really only three colors um, on these, on all of these, actually. It's just three colors. So to make one, you need uh, three pieces of cardstock. So it's a pretty easy one, not a lot of mats, not a lot of cutting, um, even when you expand the size to 10 and a half. I, of course, cut out two or sometimes more of these. So um, I used a little more cardstock, but in this case, just cutting out one would be only three pieces of cardstock. Now I use the... Um, I'm using the uh, solid card stock. And if you are wondering where to get solid card stock, my go-to place has always been Cricut. Um, but lately, Cricut has been disappointing as far as the uh, the card stock. The card stock is amazing. Cricut card stock is amazing. Works great on the machines. It just hasn't been in stock. Um, and so I have been having to go outside of Cricut to get card stock. And what I've, um, what I've come to determine is that AC or American Crafts, AC Crafts card stock, um, that is labeled precision card stock cuts just as well as the Cricut it um cardstock does the basil b-a-z-z-i-l-l -L, which everybody loves and they stock it like joann's and michael's the basil is very thick for the machine so if you happen upon and you get some basil cardstock don't be alarmed it is very thick and you have to cut it on a thick like a heavy cardstock setting. It's just so thick. So best if you are looking, um, doing the 12 uh, by 12 cardstock shop, which is 12 x 12 cardstock dot shop is a place to go. Okay. Um, <laughs> and so there is that. Yes, and um, and Michaels does also have good twelve by twelve cardstock, but um, generally not on sale all that much. Um, I like to also go to Joann's and get individual sheets when they have it on sale. Sometimes they have it; it's like ten for two dollars, ten sheets, and those normally sell for like fifty cents to a dollar each. Um, and so again, the site is 12x12cardstock.shop and, uh, tell them I sent you if you, if you place an order, I'm trying to become, um, a, an affiliate with them and do some, like, uh, they, they were looking for creative people to, to do their, uh, to do their promoting. And I put my name in, but I haven't heard back from them. So I'm hoping to hear back anyway off topic. So 10 and a half inch seems to work. However, the belly band, which is, um, 
is this size, right? And it does even have these uh, these score marks on them. It's just a tad too small when you're using cardstock like the Cricut cardstock. So what I have had to do with these is to take, ungroup them, you see, and to take these two pieces, just those two pieces, and I just make them a scotch bigger, um, just a little bit bigger. So here they are, and I'll just group them together. And um, right now they're at 11 inches and 11 and change. So I, I think I would change it to like 11.2 or 11.3, you just need that little extra bit of it to cut it because these can be rather thick. And um, the other thing that I would suggest when you do the belly bands um, is that you wait for it to completely dry because if it's even just a little bit um, wet, it won't stay together and then you try to force it onto your onto your card and it's just a mess. So just let it dry, give it a little time and let it dry for that, okay? The same holds true for the other one with the belly band, um, but what I did differently there is, let me just get rid of this. So what I did differently there, boop, okay is um, I, I extended the size of the belly band, but um, I also took the cutout from this flower and used it to sort of close and to hide the, um, let's see, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Uh, here, here it is. Okay. So I used this little cutout that was already cutting out from here and I used it to close the belly band and hide that uh, seam there and that seemed to work. But I did, uh, I did stretch out the belly band just a tad so that it could easily go over my card like this. The um the the tree one does not need um uh, or does not have a belly band. So that's pretty good. And you know what? You don't have to do the belly band either, you know, if you don't feel like it or you're it's causing you some frustration, don't do it. You know, don't do it. Now, as far as the envelopes go, I probably would I did not, but I probably would um cut the envelopes. However, these envelopes are coming in as two piece. Um, and I, I need to show you how to put those together because, um, it's useful to know how to do those two piece envelopes, but not today. All right. So, um, that, that's that. Now, let's see. So here is this one. So if we're going to resize, remember we have to ungroup it and then put all the pieces. And if you're going to do the envelope, put the envelope in there. Um, and if it helps, you can send it to the back so you don't have to worry about that. And then you put the belly band and then all of these little pieces. Now I did, for this case, I, I didn't do my, con okay, you guys, I didn't do my contour trick. All right. Oh, Benji's really loud today. I think it's, I think it's the, um, the wind. You could probably hear the wind. Anyway, but I will tell you there's a there's a few weird things about these cards. Um, first one is I, there's these weird cuts here. I have no idea what they're there for. The other thing I noticed is um, the right here on the main piece there it looks like really jaggedy for the scoring now and then I had to think about that for a second and then I realized that this card was designed back before the scoring wheel and they had some issues with the scoring stylus not scoring well enough so what they did was they put a double score line. So this is helpful if you have an explore or if you like to use um, your scoring stylus over your scoring wheel, which can only be used on a maker, right? So they've um, doubled up the scoring so that the score will look um, pretty 
close uh, to the scoring wheel score, okay? So that's useful to know that you can do that. And how would you do that on a regular card if you were creating? You would simply add a score line by going to shapes over here, and you'll see that we, here are all your shapes, and here the last one on the right uh, is score line. And it brings up a score line that is not associated. Wait, just going to take a second. So here's my score line. Let's make it bigger. And um, I could duplicate this just by going up here to the top right and hit duplicate. And then by putting them on top of each other like this, so that you can't really see where one um, starts, the other one begins. And then you would kind of group these together. And then you would add it to your uh, piece. So that's how to do a double score line if you wanted to put it here, there, or anywhere. Um, and use your scoring stylus, okay? So um, those, I think, are all the little tips and tricks from these that I want to go over. So let's put them together. Um, and I will, as I mentioned, I will give you the file that is for all three of these. Um, yeah, yeah, it's so windy here. My trash, I kind of gave up on it. It just knocked over, knocked over. Uh, <laughs> who knows what that's from? That's a great little movie. Um, I think it was Despicable Me, I think. All right, so I can hear my trash bins knocking over everywhere. So, oh, well, what are we going to do? So let's take you down and um, go through these. And they're pretty easy, a lot easier than yesterday. Um, so maybe we should have started with yesterday, um, with these with yesterday, but oh, well. Okay, so this is, uh, I cut this out uh, three times, well, actually four. Um, so I wanted to show you this color, but then I liked this brown because it's kind of a little more spring-like. So this consists of this main piece, and it's it's a square card. It ends up being a square card because here is the square, okay? And then we're just going to follow the score lines and fold on the score. Very simply, there's not a lot of scoring on this, just those four that that um, sort of identifies those four. Flip it over because we want to have some flexibility with our paper. So I always flip like this. This brown I think was basil brown and it's very thick um so okay so here it is now inside goes uh these two pieces um and so here is this one and then this comes over it so you see you will be able to see some of the trees here and we're going to glue that in place. Where's my trusty glue? Here it is. Um, and this is my Barely Art Precision Craft Glue. This is the glue that I've been using most um, in, uh, in our crafting days when I'm working with paper. But you don't have to use it. If you do want to use it, you can buy it. Um, I have links in the description of each video that um, should, takes you to Amazon. You can also buy it directly from um, from their website. And um, this, I think what I like about it is, A, if it freezes, it doesn't, um, it doesn't affect the glue once it's defrosted, obviously. And that um, is something that if you know glue, some glues will get frozen and then they are rendered useless. Now, you don't have to use a precision craft glue. Um, you can use the old standby, um, but the thing that's important to remember 
is don't use a lot of it. You see, when I put this on, I just put a little bead on there so that way it's not wet. I mean, and in some cases, maybe it feels like it's not sticking down there, but give it a second because it, it just needs a little bit. And this is probably the most important thing to learn about paper crafts is how much glue is enough. And so when I do this, I tend to just bead the glue. You see what I'm doing? And then I go through in all of these little places and just put a little bead. I'm not, I'm hardly pushing on the bottle at all, just so that a little bit comes out. Now, listen, if you do this and you don't get enough glue on it, you can always go back and put some glue there. But if you put too much glue, it's very hard to take it off. And then you get all messy and then the glue ends up everywhere. So it's best to start with the least amount that you can get away with and then um, you won't make a mess. Plus your glue will last longer. Um, I've had this bottle. I've been using this bottle every single day and it did come with this, which is um, like a, isn't it cute? It looks like a honey jar. Um, and I'm only halfway through this and I've been using it daily since the fall. So, I mean, even though I paid $30 for this whole thing, um, including some special tips and everything. Uh, I think this is totally worth it because when I was using other glues, I was buying them like every month. And I hated that because it just used so much of it. And um, I just like this glue. It just works. Okay, so there's the inside of the card. Now we're going to flip over and do the outside. And there are four flaps, but there are six pieces here. So there are these two pieces in the darker green or the contrast color, I should say. And then here is in the light green and they're going to layer like this. So then you can see all the different, all the different, uh, can you just buy the refill of the, yeah, yes, you can. And you can buy the little uh, bottles as well and not buy the refill if you don't want to. I think it's like 10 bucks to just buy the little this bottle, uh, 10 or $12. So um, if you don't want to commit to anything, then, you know, but for me, I thought this was a great deal to have the bundle um, because I use a lot of glue. But I don't use a lot of glue on any individual project. <laughs> I just use a lot of glue because I'm always doing paper crafts. Okay, and then here's we go. This is all that's required. Oops, I I, sp I spread that out accidentally. Um, but so here we go. We're just putting the glue on the back in a bead. And I just go here just to kind of know that I'm going to secure this and put it on here and this one here as well okay so this goes every other so this one here is just kind of like i suppose supposed to look like the bark and then this one here is the leaves so we're just going to go around and make sure we do every other one um so that when we close it you'll see all well basically all four flaps two of the bark and two of the leaves okay i'm going to call this the the bark <laughs> I don't know what else to call it but it's awful cute okay so um just working my way around here and remember this is the one that does not have the belly band okay put this on try to work fast okay
Okay, that's it for this one. And let me show you how it folds. So simple. All right, I suppose if you wanna put a sentiment here, you can always use the flaps or the back of the card. And then we just fold them in like this. And remember, like a cardboard box. So the, this flap is at the front, which is not, the glue is not secure yet. And then, um, then you're going to just, with the fourth flap, you're gonna have to lift it and then close it. That's why I like to call this a box top card. And isn't that adorable? Really pretty, um, very earthy too. So um, that is the, the, uh, the, tree one which is probably the easiest of these three so if you want to get started on one try with the tree the next up is this one that i did um and i did it in a little bit of spring colors because the one that it on the pattern it shows as blue and other blues and I did not like, it was too blue, I don't know. So <laughs> um, what you'll notice here that's different is that there are these cutouts here, which are gonna be covered, but then when they, um, when you see on the inside, they give a nice color from what ends up getting color covered on the, on the flap. Does that make sense? Okay, so this is very similar. It's a square card. We're going to fold all these flaps so, so that they're able to move very quickly. There's the inside of the card. And so it's two pieces. That layer, just like we did with the tree, and I could see like if it was like a spring card you were giving to somebody to cut out happy spring in vinyl um, there. Or if you wanted to write a message with your pens, there you go. And then we just need to go and put this double layer in there. And it gives the card a lot of nice heft. Um, you know, I, I don't, I, I'll tell you something. Um, this morning I was going through a box. Yeah, this morning. Um, I was, I was looking for pictures of when I was in college because I, um, started talking with my old college sweetheart. Um, oh my God, I love this guy. He's such a fabulous guy. I mean, that's just, whatever. Um, not that there's anything to it. I'm just, I started talking to him. We were inseparable in college. So I went back and I looked at um, some of the ephema, ephemera, ephemera pictures and papers and what have you. And I happened upon a box full of cards from when I was a child and my sister was a child. Um, and you know what I found out is that way back then, this would be the 60s, they would take an eight and a half by 11 inch sheet of very thin paper and then fold it twice to make a card. I have to show you them to you. I'm going to bring them tomorrow. Um, okay. So anyway, here we go. Here is the inside of the card. We can flip it over like this, and then we can start putting the flaps on. The flaps are easy. Uh, they're two-toned, so um, you have to just match them up. So this is the tulip that you match up, you see, and this one here. I guess looks like a lily to me. Um, and this one is like more like, a, I don't know, a daisy or a mom. And then where is the back of this one? Mm -hmm. Come on. I'm going to just check in here. All right. Yeah, this one. Here we go. So this one goes... Like this. This looks like a butterfly, I think. Um, so there you are. And then you're going to put them over here. And this is what I was talking about. So see these cutouts here? These will fit perfectly like over there. So on the other side, you get to see pink, which is just really such a darling little touch. Now, make sure you are putting these on so you're putting them on correctly so here's the way that they're supposed to go on this one is facing this way this one is facing this way okay 
Uh, if you can kind of see that. And then this one is facing up. And then this one is going to face down. That's important for when you do the fold, okay? Um, and uh, believe me, because I made the mistake with the dog one. And um, it was driving me nuts. It was driving me nuts. And I'm like, what, what, what's going on here? And then I realized I put it on the wrong way. Okay, so, and and it's cut so that it's got a curved edge. So you should, you know, you should be able to figure it out without actually thinking too hard about it. But I don't know, for me, maybe I didn't have enough coffee yesterday or something, but I was, I was um, confused. All right, so we're just gonna go around and put these flaps, you can move it like this if you want, but we're gonna keep them all in that same place and they are going to, the way that it's cut out, they're gonna cover that those cutouts on the flap. I'm gonna show you what that looks like in a second. Um, and <laughs> one of the things about working on a, on a sun porch is that when it's windy, it makes a lot of noise. <laughs> so so um, working on a sun porch in the wind is kind of interesting. It sounds like I have ghosts. Okay, so I flip it over and I'm keeping on here. All right. Pink first, then the purple pink and purple so so what are we doing for craft month I think uh, I think that we should all be uh, able to buy whatever crafts we want because it's craft month <laughs> who's with me um, no I don't know craft month oops did I make a mistake? I made a mistake. I made a mistake. Did I make a mistake? I think I did. I made a mistake. Oh, poop. Okay, so this one is supposed to go on the other flap. Come on, Rita, get with the program. Okay, here we go. So it's supposed to be opposites, you see? Opposites, so... Yeah, you live in the middle of a cemetery. Oh, goodness. Hey, you know, way back when we bought this house, and um, I live in a city that's very old, and in fact, it used to be part of Salem, and you guys know Salem. Salem um, is the witch hunt and all of that, right? So this used to be called uh, Salem Farms or Salem, I don't know. Salem Field or something like that. Something stupid like that. And um, anyway, so way back, this used to be a farm called Emerson Farm. And um, when I first bought this house, it's over 100 years old, I was um, replacing some shrubs, really overgrown, big shrubs that hadn't been replaced for a uh, probably like 50 plus years and we happened upon a headstone um in the in there and we freaked out we were like oh my gosh maybe our house is haunted why would they put a head is somebody buried here we had to have the whole um historic society come down and um they we couldn't figure out the name on the he helped us with the name on there and assured us that it was just the headstone and not a body um apparently at a certain point i don't know in the 70s or 60s or something when they were filling or maybe even earlier than that when they were filling the um the area to build houses um they had used old headstones to fill in the um, places to make flat areas it had to be before that and so they used old headstones from the local um cemetery to which is like what um and so that's you know that's what happened we came upon an old headstone that had been replaced um but it was still kind of an interesting story right 
Okay, so um, so I've got all the glue. Now, I would normally wait for this to dry, but I wanted to show you this is how it would look. So see, I can see all four flowers, and then it's every other is the color. So let's talk about this belly band. It's just two pieces, and I did extend it a little bit, and I did also keep this little cutout just so that you can see what I did. So we're going to glue these two pieces together. And I got so creeped out by that um, by that headstone that they ended up taking it away and putting it on. There's a there's cemeteries all around here, but um, putting it where the original uh, stone where it was originally um, next to it was kind of cool. Um, Okay, so there's our two pieces, and it's going to go like this. So you can hold it up, and you can see where the um, where the score was made. But it's going to sort of wrap around like this. See how I extended it because it was coming in like this and it wasn't going to work. So here it is. It's extended. So I would suggest that you um, wrap it around your, before you go ahead and glue it, wrap it around your card um, so that you know, and you want to give it a little bit of of breathing room, right? It's a belly band, right? And um, also, so for decorative purposes, I just took one of these little bits that were part of the cutout so you couldn't see where that was folded over, okay? So I am not like, oh, pulling it really, really tightly. I'm keeping it on the loose side because I want to be able to take it off and put it on again, and you do have to wait for it to dry. See, it's automatically just going to um, come undone. So here is what it looks like. See how I have left a little bit of space in there? But you have to wait for it to really dry because if you start moving around with it, it will release. Um, I also, just so you can see what I did here, this is just a cutout and it's just an idea. You don't have to do it, but... You can cut this out and put it on and maybe put a little sticker or even a little for you or remove me. I don't know, but it was it was just a, a sort of an afterthought on one of those little pieces that came out. So we have to wait for the belly band to dry. So, but this is how it would go. It would go on there. And when you gave it to somebody, they'd take it off and they would see this beautiful little card, which you don't need the belly band for, by the way. And, um, and then you open it up and there's your card. So cute, right? Really cute. Now let's do the last one. The last one for me, I don't know, maybe not for you guys, was a little tricky. And I'm a dog person and a cat person. I'm an animal person. But this is how I originally did it. So here is the butt of the dog. And I so I did it wrong. So the one the uh, this dog should have been facing this way so that way you could see all of the heads you'd see two dogs and two cats and then when you opened it up there are the two dogs and two cats and then all of these cutouts just so cute right the paw prints and this one does also have a belly band i love these colors this is what was suggested for color so that's what i used and i just like the way that it came out um so let me show you how to put it together so it starts off pretty easy um by putting this middle part in there right um, and that consists of two pieces. So this is the base and then this is, um, goes over it, the overlay. I will tell you, I cut these pieces on intricate cut mode because, um, I was like, whoa, this is really delicate. And, um, I would suggest that you do the same. And let me just make sure all these little cuts are out for the paw paws. The paw paws. All right. 
Come on, Papa. Now, interestingly, I think that certain things should be on here because like this one has the three cuts here and this one has two cuts and over here so um so i'm i'm like a little curious about that i don't know might have to figure it out while we're doing it okay so fold the same way all four of those um of those flaps get folded and then you fold it the other way right? Because you want a little bit of movement in your card. Now, somebody on YouTube asked me, um, would it be easier to use thinner paper? Yeah, but cardstock, mostly I use medium weight cardstock. So for me, um, I didn't have anything thinner. So um, that's why I used this and I just made sure that I really folded it well. Okay, so the inside piece is easy. It just goes in like this and then this gets overlay right here. So let's do that. It's the outside flaps that I am just confounded. Is that the word? Confounded. It's a little bit confusing for me. Okay, so this goes on here first, right? Get it on there. And then this is really an inlay, that's what it is, kind of, um, and it's rather delicate. So do work with um, care on that. And we're going to put a little bit of glue in just those little areas, not a lot. Hey, April, last night, um, I got your email. And um, also, you, I think, have said that you, you're glue bubbles at the top. So if anybody else has had glue that sort of bubbles at the top, maybe listen up. I found that that happens when I'm starting to need to fill the bottle. Um, is it just like the extra air in the bottle creates those little bubbles on the top point, okay? Um, and... I think this would be a great card for to say thank you to a vet, um, such as the one that helped my Benji out with his ear problems recently, um, and or just a friend that likes fun cards because this is definitely fun with the bulldog. Now it could have been even funner if they were corgis, but hey, I'm not going to complain since. Uh, there are, I, we found out that the corgis are in design space, which I'm going to have to find. Thank you, Nancy. Okay. So gently, gently put this on here and you see it actually inlays into that cutout. Um, and again, not a lot of glue because I don't want it to come seeping out, um, under these things. So if I need to say right here on this little dog's ear, then I just lift it up and put a little bit of glue to hold it down. You can put it on the back of that, but you don't want it to seep up. All righty. Okay, so that's the inside, real cute. So let's flip it over. This is where it gets a little complicated for me. So um, I don't know, maybe I'm just overthinking it. I don't know, but um, let's get those pieces wherever they happen to be. How come I can't find all the pieces? Weird. Um, all right, so. This one is not quite done, I think. Oh, I do have all the pieces. Okay, so there are two dogs like this and two cats. But remember how we did the other one? We want to cut it so that um, 
one dog is facing one way and the other dog is facing the other way. And then the same with the cats, like this and like this. Now I tend to think that this, this is actually wrong because you can see the cutouts here. And I think that's where I started thinking, oh, this isn't right. So, um, so I started to move it around and then realized that, you know, maybe the cats are the better thing because it covers, but even still it doesn't. So I don't know. Um, maybe it's not supposed to, I don't know. But what got me off track was I wasn't putting the one dog going the other way and it was getting me all messed up. So in this case, we have one cat going this way and then the dog going this way and then the cat going this way and that way. We want it like that. And then there will be these pieces that you have to go and do that inlay there. So this is a lot of detail on this one. Um, so take your time with it. Okay. So here's the dog and make sure it matches. So where's the other dog? So it matches the dog's tail. So here you go. I'm going to flip it over like this. So it matches the dog's tail. Does that make sense to everybody? Um, so I'm going to do that. And then also the belly band I will do so that um, it's the same thing as the other one. Um, where it's two pieces, you got to glue it together. You got to give it a little bit of a flap, um, so that so that um, you can get it on and off that card. And all right. So, oh, hey, you guys, um, remember Saturday, this Saturday is our monthly Zoom call and it is going to be, I think it's seven o'clock and it is, uh, the theme is spring, uh, for your, for your costumes. If you're going to wear a special costume, um, you can do anything spring-like, Easter, uh, St. Patrick's Day, or just flowers, whatever you want to do. And um, then the topic, so we have a theme is spring, and the topic is um, show and tell. Bring your favorite thing that you've made um, with your Cricut and... Um, and uh, tell us all about it. Tell us what was a challenge or what you liked about it, that sort of thing. I have to think about what I, what's my favorite. And it doesn't have to be spring. If you bring something that's Christmas because you love this particular thing you made at Christmas, heck, why not? Uh, I think that would be fun. And there will also be prizes. Um, so we'll do prizes. We'll probably pick them the way that we've picked them um, in in the past where we did a number. Because um, I think that that's fair. All right. So we'll have a prize. Our usual monthly prizes, which I have to put in for. But... Um, should be all set to go for Saturday night at 7. So this week we're actually meeting every day of the week um, if you count the Zoom calls. Um, so that's kind of cool. Right? So I hope you can make it. If you can't make it, that's fine. If you're worried about what you look like on Zoom, don't. Because then you'll get to see me uh, finally with no hair. <laughs> with very little hair. And um, that's okay too. So, And the lighting will be nice because it's like date night time. Um, and then somebody did ask about date night and brunch. And remember, we wanted to just... Uh, do I wanted to do a uh, brunch because um, I couldn't see too well um, at night, but I might 
be solving that problem by getting better lighting. Um, and so we might be able to come back to seven o'clock on Saturday. And I don't know what you guys think. Um, the brunch is nice, but it's kind of late. It's kind of late for me. So I think I would rather it be, um, earlier in the day. Um, so maybe if we, if we add back date night, we can make brunch at like noon or something. I think that would work for me. Um, I, I don't know. For me, 3 o'clock, it seems like my day is almost over. Um, and, I mean, except for nights that we have date night where, you know, I can do a whole bunch of stuff and then um, and then just get ready for date night. So, I don't know. What do you guys think? Uh, I'd love to hear your feedback on that. Okay. And also for the folks that won a prize last month, um, first of all, um, if you won a prize from me from from the first Zoom call we did, um, I was talking to Teresa uh, last night by email, and she hasn't received it because she's in Canada. But I did mail them. Um, but the mail is so wonky right now. So please be patient. So if you received a prize... Um, in January, whether it was on the Zoom call or you, um, if you won a prize, I should say, th those should all be out. Now, if you won a prize for February, none of those have been mailed yet. So I'll let you know when they are mailed, but I don't put them in until the end of the month. Um, it just works better that way because then I, I can give them out during the whole month. Okay. All right, so there it is. So when you turn it over, here you go. There are the colors. But see, I don't clearly like that. There must be some trick there, but that I'm not getting. So it folds like this. And so you've got to keep the uh, heads at the very top. So when you get to the fourth one, you have to just tuck it in like this. Went. The first time you do it, you might have to press it out because it is thick cardstock, right? And then the belly band, the belly band is the same thing as the other one. We're going to just glue um, the back of the cutout, which is an absolutely adorable cutout. Come on, Rita. All right, so we do um, some glue on the back here and all right, just down here. And as I mentioned uh, at the beginning of the show, um, there is also this other one that I'm cutting out using the patterned iron, I'm um, sorry, the patterned, uh, vinyl that I will show you later on. I haven't had time to put it all together again. So here's the belly band. Make sure you hold it up to your card so that you can make sure that it fits and don't do it too tightly. And I did extend this one a little bit. So then we're going to glue here right there and allow that to dry before you start taking it off. So those are our three cards today. There's the Tree of Life one, or the tree. There's this really adorable um, spring. I like it, spring flowers. I like it spring. It comes in as blue, so just don't mind that I just switched out the colors with the belly band here. Boop. Personally, um, the belly bands are kind of fun, but I mean, not all, all the time. Anyway, and then this dog one that opens up like this, dog and cat. I keep leaving out the dogs and cats. It opens up like this. And so I suppose you can hold it this way or this way that you can use the flaps for um, 
for your sentiment or for your writing. Okay, so that is it for today, folks. I'm going to continue to work here at my little desk once I go out there and corral my my trash bins again. Um, and let's see, later on, I. I might come back later on to show you what's up for tomorrow if I, I get to that place, but I'm not sure if I will. Um, and so you might look for me later on in the day. Um, and then otherwise, we'll see you tomorrow. Tomorrow. Yeah, the pinwheel, I'm going to, I will do it for you and come back. Yeah, that's probably a good idea. I'll come back and talk to you about this pinwheel that I cut first in paper, but it's so thick that I want to go back and cut out of, um, I mean, it works, but boy, it's so thick. Um, so I want to cut out using, or I started cutting out using the patterned, uh, iron, no, I want to keep saying patterned iron on patterned, uh, vinyl. And I want to show you how thin it would become because now it looks like a bowl. It doesn't even open up all the way. Right. So, oh, so we'll do that. All right. And then, so tomorrow we're back with Z fold cards. Um, and there are several in those uh, categories and also there's a couple Father's Day Z Volt cards that I want to show you as well. Um, Z Fold are exactly what they sound like. They're shaped where they fold like a Z, so they're like they're like the tri fold, but it's it's folded in a different way. And you'll see how the pattern works with the Z Fold. All right, everyone, thank you. Thank you, everyone, for coming today. I hope you have a wonderful afternoon or day, and we will see you again tomorrow, possibly later on today, okay? Um, take care of yourselves and enjoy National Craft Day and National Craft Month. I'm going to be looking for some things to do with uh, National Craft Month, I think. Um, and that is it, folks. Take care. Bye.